Okay, I'm going to admit that this is a fairly complicated problem, but let me explain the problem to you and then we, we can solve it. So here I have represented a magnetic field. See that? It looks just like a magnetic field, right? So these X's represent a magnetic field going into the paper with a magnitude of 0.1 Tesla. I just totally made that up. And then I have this loop. It's a square loop. It's not perfectly square because I made it in real life. And this is going to be moving like this into the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is going into the paper. This, the, the loop is in the plane of the paper and moving to the right. Okay, so let's just say, um, actually I got that for the magnetic field. Let's say the length is of this square on the side is 0 0.04 meters. And let's say the speed is one meter per second. So that's the, that's the speed it's gonna go into. So how would I calculate the force on this wire as I move it in there? Would it, would it be pushing this way? Would it be pushing that way? There's a whole bunch of questions, okay? So there's a lot of stuff here too. Um, I actually, let's go over the key equations. Uh, I've already made a videos on these, but let's just review them. Uh, so the first is this. What is the force on an electric current in a magnetic field? Well, this is the cross product, okay? This is says the, it's the current times the vector length of the wire times the magnetic field. If, and that, that, that's complicated, okay? Uh, but let's just get the magnitude. So the magnitude of this force is just ILB sine theta, where theta is the angle between the direction of the length and the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, I have uh, the wires going this way. Let's say the current's going that way. And the magnetic field is this way going in. So the angle between those is 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees is one. That gives me that. So the force is just going to be ILB. Now for the direction, we can use the right hand rule and I'll do that at the end, but let's just get that started. Now the other thing we need to think about is the magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is kind of like uh, how much magnetic uh, field passes through that area. So it's the magnitude of the magnetic field times the magnitude of the area times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, in this case, it's the angle between a vector perpendicular to the area and the magnetic field. So that's either gonna be like this, right? Because there's my magnetic field and there's my area. So they're either 180 degrees, or if you want it, you could do it this way, zero degrees. But both ways, you're gonna get cosine of one or negative one, okay? So the, the flux in this case is gonna be B times A, where A is the area of the field passing through the flux. So if I have it right here, it's this area. It's not the length of the whole thing because there's no magnetic field over here. Okay, so it's only that part. So let's actually, this is called this X. And we're gonna get to that. Okay, what does flux matter for? Uh, actually, I, sh I should draw this as a little dotted line so I can remember where it was. Okay. There. Uh, so what does the flux matter? It matters for Faraday's law, which says that the uh, the voltage around this loop is not zero. And in fact, it depends on the n the number of loops, in this case n is just one, and the rate of change of the flux with respect to time, d phi dt. Okay. Um, there the book puts a negative sign there, but I don't like that um, because it doesn't it, I understand what they're trying to say, but it just you don't if you don't put that there, that's fine. Uh, finally, we're going to need to find the current in here, and so oh, I do need that. Let's say the the uh, let's say the resistance of this loop R is uh, 10 ohms of the whole thing. Okay, so if I know the current, well, I'm sorry, if I know the the voltage around the loop and the resistance, I can find the current and then use that up here for the force. So I want to find that force. So let's first find the magnetic flux. So on this case, uh, I'm gonna say the flux. You know, and here's a great example of, I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna write down what I do know and proceed from there, okay? That's what you should always do. If, if this was a test and you didn't know exactly what to do, you write that down, you make some progress, you get partial credit at the very least, and it may turn out fine in the end, okay? So the magnetic flux is going to be, uh, I'm just using the formula, it's B times A, and, and theta, let's call theta zero degrees. So it's just going to be BA. Now, but what's the area? 
if this is a length L and that's a length X, then this area is going to be B times L times X, where X is actually going to change as this thing moves in. But I'm going to leave it as X right now. Okay, so I'm not going to put any numbers in there. I don't know what X is, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now let's find the, the voltage around the whole thing, the EMF, the electromotive force. So EMF is going to be equal to N, which is 1, times the change in flux over the change in time. And now I could do something like pick a short amount of time and calculate the new flux, but I'm not going to do that. I'm instead going to write this as delta BLX over delta T. That's my flux. I just wrote it right there. Now, during this coil moving in there, B doesn't change. L doesn't change. So I, I can just factor those out. So I can really write this as BL delta X over delta T. Oh my goodness, what does that look like? See, this is where you get to the part where it's like, I, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. And now I'm here in a situation where I have delta x over delta t, which is the velocity. So I get B, L, V. I didn't even need to know x, right? So that's going to give me my EMF, B, L, V. Now what, I, what can I do? I can now find the current. I need the current. So in this case, the resistance of the whole loop is 10 ohms. And if I use the loop rule, I know uh, delta V is going to be not zero because it's not it's not a, a static current situation. So I have uh, EMF equals BLV equals IR. So now I is going to be BLV, that's a small v, V over R. And again, I know those numbers. So what do I do next? Well, now I can go back up here to my force equation and calculate the force. And then we'll get the direction in just a second. Okay, so I already said uh, theta is 90 degrees, so it's just going to be ILB. So now I get the force on the wire is going to be I, which is B L V over R, times L times B. So I get B squared L squared V over R. Now I can put that value, my values in. I'm going to get point one Tesla squared. The length I said was point, what did I say it was? 0.04 meters squared. The velocity I said was one. And then the resistance was 10. So let's, let's get out my favorite calculator. I should name it. Okay, so I have point 0.1, oops, point 0.1 squared. 0.04, oh, it went out. Okay, let's see if it makes it. So I get 0.1 squared, 0.04 squared, one, I'm not even gonna do that one, right? Time, multiply those two together and then divide by 10, which I could do without doing that anyway. So I get <clears throat> 1.6, times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6 newtons. Now what direction is that? Um, so the direction of this force, so the first thing I need to do is to use Lenz's law. Let me write that down. This says the direction of the current induced current. I'll put I induced is in the uh, creates a magnetic field. Creates, let's say, creates B opposing delta flux. I know that's crazy, okay? But what this says is that if I have my loop of wire right there. What is happening to the flux? Well, the flux is increasing, right? Because I'm moving it in. So this wants to make a current to fight that change. So if, if I could decrease the magnetic field, I would decrease the flux. So how would I 
make a magnetic field going this way to counteract that magnetic field? Well, I could use my right hand. So in my right hand, I put my fingers in the direction of the current of the loop and my thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field. So if the current is going this way, then it would oppose the change in flux as I move it in. So now let's see uh, if I have that as my eye. I had a little, here's my right hand rule thing. Have you seen, have I shown you this? This is my right hand rule uh, for forces. So th this is B, this is the force, and this is QV, which is the same as the I. So I'm going to put I in that direction. I'm going to put B in that direction. And then this is the direction of the force. So the force is pushing this way. So as I as this moves in, the force actually pushes it away. So it's hard to push in. It's not going to just get sucked in. Okay. Um, which is good because, you know, you got to think, I'm generating a current in here. If it gets pulled in, I can let go and get free current and free energy, and that just doesn't happen. I need to push it in to get that current. I, I don't get free energy. This is the same thing as the right-hand rule. So if you use your right hand, okay, it's got to be your right hand, uh, and you do uh, Q I B F, okay. And if you want to write your thing on on that for your test, I'm okay with that because I said you can use your notes, okay. Some other faculty might not like that, but that's up to you. Okay, let's do one more thing. Um, like I said, this is a hard problem, okay. It's a hard problem. Hard problems are fun problems too. So what if I want to make a graph of the force as a function of time as that goes in? Well, let's think about this right here. Does any of this change with time? No, it doesn't. These are all constant. So I have this constant value right here. As soon as it enters in there, it goes like that. Now, at some point, something happens. At some point, it gets right here. And now the flux does not depend on x. The flux depends on this length l. And if I take this, would become delta b l squared over delta t. And none of that changes. This doesn't change, it's all constant. So I get delta nothing, which is zero. So after the loop makes it all the way into the magnetic field, the flux is no longer changing. It has to change the flux in order to have an induced EMF. But once it's all the way in, it's not changing. So you get nothing. Okay. Now, if it starts passing out of the field, now again, I'll get an induced current and it will actually be the opposite way because I'll have the flux changing. So it would probably look like this if you had a finite uh, magnetic field. This is while it's entering, this is while it's in, and then you'd have a force in the opposite direction as it leaves. So in, let's see, entering, in, leaving. There you go. How do you like that? Okay, like I said, that's, that's a tough problem, okay? You know, you wanna start and practice putting a lot of ideas together. Uh, one of the things in physics that I want to emphasize is it's not just, oh, here's an equation. I want you to plug that in. That's what the computer does, right? That's a computer. It just says, take these numbers and plug it in and calculate something. And, you, and we're more than that. We're humans. We, we synthesize. We uh, make connections. We build new ideas. We use multiple things together. That's what makes us better than the robots. So I, I know this is tough, okay? That's why you have to practice. You're not just going to get it right away. And that's okay. Okay. That's enough for now.